Good morning all and um, welcome to um, the first in our series of webinars on the um, Advanced Power Pack um, for Revit. So let's get on and have a look at the tools that we're looking at today. Um, we're going to be looking at this Link to Excel. Now this Link to Excel tool is absolutely brilliant in what it does. This will actually allow us to not only export say a schedule out to Excel which you can already do but what it does is it allows us then to have the bi-directional connectivity that means we can then change information within the Excel spreadsheet and propagate that information back into the Revit model. So it's not just about taking an Excel spreadsheet out to Excel for someone else to be able to do some work on and then we can issue them with new data as we're going along. This will allow us to actually have a full bi-directional link. We can also then update the Excel spreadsheet later on when and if the Revit model changes as well. So a really powerful set of tools that we've got in here. Okay, so it gives us that access to anything that we can pull out. It will only let us change instance parameters because obviously that could be quite um, an issue, but it will let you change pretty much every instance parameter. If you're trying to change a type parameter because of the impact that that would have on the types within the, the Revit family, um, it won't let you do that. It's the way that Revit itself protects its data to make sure that data can't be changed. It would um, affect the model in an adverse way, if you like. Okay, so very short um, PowerPoint. Let's actually have a look at how all this works um, in reality. So I've actually already got um, um, a file open here in Revit. Some of you probably recognize this model. The model's not too important today. Um, but here we have our Grey Tech Power Pack. Um, the power pack has got bigger, so there's more tools available in here. You'll, you'll notice that they're, they're just about fitting on the end in here. Um, what we can now do as well is we can now start to customize the ribbon. So the fact that we have so many tools available to us, um, we do have the ability in the new power pack to be able to come in and turn off icons that we don't want. For instance, maybe I'm not interested in reinforcement. I might better turn off just individual tools or I can actually turn off the whole of this reinforcement tab. So we can just untick that, click OK, and it's now removed that. So it makes it a little bit easier for me to find the tools that I'm interested in. Very similar to the way that you can actually do it already in Revit within the options. Okay, and we've got some various other sort of connections here. We've got links to some of our other tools. So links to our um, BIM Connect tools and our advanced design. OK, so we've got additional tools as well, which we, you can purchase, which are also sat and accessible from this toolbar. So as mentioned, there's going to be some webinars coming up on our family manager, our new numbering tools and our exports, our sheet and export generators as well. OK, but the tool that I'm going to concentrate on today is here. So this is our link to Excel. I'm going to show you um, a few different ways in which this tool actually works. So, if, for instance, I click on the link to Excel, it will show me any links that are in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete any links so that I'm starting off from scratch. So we can create our, a new link and you can have as many links in here as you want. So you could have um, a link for maybe um, all your doors, all your windows or a door and window. The one thing that this link does is it gives us the ability to create multi-category schedules very quickly as well. So if I go to add link, um, I can use an existing link. Well, we haven't got any links in here. Um, I could do it from a the current schedule. So if I had a catch schedule view in the background, it would use that. Or I can do it from multiple schedules. So any schedules that I've already got set up within my project, I could use them as well. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to start from an empty um, an empty schedule, if you like, or create an empty link with the data that I want to be able to export. So what I can do then is I can come down, um, I can choose from the current selection in Revit. So if I've actually already done a selection of objects, we could use them objects to start to generate the, the information we want to export. And it would only export the information from them um, entities. Or I could do from the entire project. Now, the entire project actually means all categories. Yeah, so I'll just show you the difference. If I choose the entire project and go OK, it's already generated all the tables. So it's basically said these are all the categories that are currently in my project. 
So any any category that's, for instance, if I've got no ductwork in there, there would not be any ductwork. And as you can see, it's got some zones. It's some air terminal. There's one air terminal actually in this model, but there's no duct. So it only creates the categories that are actually in that model. If I just cancel that and we just create a new one, but this time I don't want it from there. Now it will ask me which table I want. So when we say add a table, these are going to be the tables and the categories that are available. So in this case, I'm actually going to do a, a room schedule. So I can go to rooms. I can give this table a name. So I'll call it um, rooms. And the category is the instances or types. I just want the instances. So the instances of these rooms. So here's all the now the property. So this is a little bit like creating a schedule. So if you've got all the other information, these are all the information that could be linked back to rooms. Okay. Um, and I could then start to find information in here. So I'm interested in um, any of the information that could already be listed in here. So I'm interested in its name, um, its number. Yeah. And we can start to put this information across there. Um, its area, etc. I'm now building up the schedule that I want to export and the data that I want to create from there. We can start to filter as well, so we can then filter by name, just to type in at the bottom here what it actually is we're looking for. Yes, yeah, so if I wanted its volume, I can type volume as well. So it makes it a little bit easier because searching that list, the list can get longer. Some plugins that we put in, for instance, if you've installed the Kobe plugin for Revit, you'll have all the Kobe information in there as well. So it just adds the amount of available fields that potentially you want to filter through. So I can click OK, and this will now create this Excel spreadsheet. And I could I could tell it where I want it to go. So it's going to put it under Documents, Office Block Architect 2017. Next job I need to do is hit Export. And this will now export the data from the Revit model. Okay. So there we go. That has exported that out. If I was just to launch Excel. And then we'll go find that document that I've just saved. So let's just go open. And this PC was in my documents. Let's just scroll down. Office block 17, there we go, 10th of the 10th. Here we now have the spreadsheet exported out nicely. Yeah, And we've got all the room names for all the rooms that are currently set up. It's done the instances, so it's only where they exist. If I've got any blank rooms, um, you've just got to be careful because it may not place them as it is. It has actually placed the ones that have been unplaced areas as well. Okay. So we've got some rooms that are unplaced, look, with the zero areas. And I've got the room numbers as well. So at the moment, the numbers aren't really what I want. So what I want to do is um, come down and potentially start to change the values that are in there. Oh, it's actually protected, is that one at the moment, yeah? But we've got the information. This is a static cell at the moment, okay? Um, I could potentially, though, change the room names as well. This Everything's unfortunately locked in here at the moment, but we'll come out of that one and I'll show you one that isn't locked. Okay, so I'm now going to click OK and I'm going to create um, a schedule within here. Okay, so I'm actually going to create a, another room schedule because um, what I want to do is I want to analyze the size of the spaces. So I'm going to go rooms and I'm going to create a, a one that's going to have number, name, the level that it's on, its area, and that will do me. I'm going to have a field call that I've already set up called required area. Yeah. And then I'm also going to add into there a calculated field. Yeah. Called area difference. So the, the difference in the area, it's going to be an area. And it's going to be calculated by the area minus the required area. Okay. So here we now have a, two additional fields, which is the required area for the room and then the difference. So anything but short is going to tell me where my room's too small for the required area. Remember, I'm calculating as a school. 
there's a certain occupancy level that I'm looking to achieve. Okay, so we can place that in there. If I now go back to our power pack and I go back to my link, if I add a new link into here, so in this case I'm going to go from current schedule and we'll go OK. So there we go. There's my room schedule. If I click on it, it'll show me exactly how it was set up, which is good. Okay. Um, I could change where I could edit this and change where it's located. Because notice if I'm not careful, it's going to put this into the same um, spreadsheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edit this a little bit and we'll change this to be um, office block room areas. And I can change where that's going to serve it to as well. So let's cut that room areas. Okay. Just update that. Click OK. And we can do an export now. Well, that's exporting. Just relaunch Excel. And we'll click OK on our successful. Let's now reopen that one. Let's go browse. And let's find the office bot room areas. OK. So we now have this one. So the area difference at the moment is not going to show me because that's a calculated value inside of there. But I've got access now to my required areas. So what I can then start to do is I can start to look at that's going to be 20. It needs to be 80. That's 12. That should be three because it's a disabled toilet. That's going to be 10. I think my building is going to be a bit smaller than what it needs to be. That should be three. We'll set that up to nine. Let's go change the other one to nine as well. Not be greedy. Okay, so I can now come in and I can start to look at all the areas and the information about what my required spaces are. I won't do all of these. I'll just do a few of them. Set that to 14. Let's go 18, 10. 74 and 55 okay so we now start to get some information here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to save the changes so the information that i've been typing in today i can hit save we can go now back into here um, so here's the schedule at the moment obviously the required areas are not filled in at the moment all i need to do is go back to my link on this one i'm actually going to do an import so i'm going to do an import from the data that's coming across. This will look at the spreadsheet, will look at the value changes that are in there. So if we now click OK, this has now started to fetch all the other information that I've got in the spreadsheet and it's starting to show the fields in here. So this is a direct link of exporting data that I'm creating out and back in again. Um, if I was to then just go to filter or to appearance, sorry, Let's have a look at this area difference. Um, let's put a conditional format into there. So basically anything where it's less than or equal to zero, let's just give us a caution color on there to say that we might need to address these situations. So I can put a conditional format in now that's going to actually feed that information back. Um, we mentioned as well we can use this for certain dimensional constraints as well. So if I just created, um, let's add a new link. In fact, let's not do it that way. Let's do it from, from a schedule. So let's do a schedule first. So I'm going to create a schedule. Um, I'm after, let's do a window schedule. And all I want to do is control maybe the heights, the sill heights. So let's have a look at its number. It's mark, it's family and type, it's sill height, yeah, um, and it's level because maybe I wanted to control um, by its level. So we'll click OK. So here we have our our window schedule, yeah, and our window numbers, yeah, and let's do an export from this one again. So if I now come in, link to Excel, add a new link. Um, you can do one from multiple schedules as well. So I could create a door and window export. So they're all in the same spreadsheet, if you like. So I'm only editing one spreadsheet. And um, we'll just do it from the current schedule. Okay. Um, 
this is going to be office block um, windows and we'll say where it's exporting you've got to be careful here because you can if you don't set this up it will overwrite an existing one it will give you the warning message to say it already exists um, so it does it does protect you in that sense there we go it's all set up so I'll click OK there's my windows let's do the export um, I also like the fact that it will tell you the last time it was synchronized as well so we actually can understand when these changes have been made office block windows let's do an export on that We'll do a file open. Browse. Our spot windows. Okay. So here we have our, our model. And as you can see, this, most of them are actually all set. Uh, other than the, the windows that are actually for the toilet windows, these are all set now at 675. Uh, what I might want to do is I might actually want to change all of these to 800 in fact what I'm going to do is just to show you that this works I'm actually going to change every single sill height in this model to 800 okay so regardless of where the window is now it's all 800 because uh, it might be that we've just checked and we know we need to change them I can do it all in one batch quick move um, so we'll do a save on that if I now go back um, to Revit just okay that and just okay that a second and let's just go to um, this east elevation there's a few styles already set up on here so just take a little bit of time just to get my styles in let's just um, change that back down to shaded and get rid of some of them styles let's get me rid of me sketchy lines turn them off background none okay and we'll just go hidden line so we nice and clear so we've got the windows set up with a sill height currently where they were but if I now go to my Excel link and we'll go to the windows and I'll do an import I can actually now affect the way that the model works now there is a new feature in Revit 2017 it was released in um, 16R2 which was the global parameters we can actually start to export global parameters here as well so you can even control the model um, dimensions as well using global parameters uh, if you haven't seen global parameters I highly recommend you you have a little look on the help file they're really really clever click OK on that now and then all the windows have now moved to their new sill height uh, including if I went to save the north elevation all of these as well so I can select that window and we can actually see that the sill height has moved to 800 so this is a full bi-directional link between Revit and our Revit and Excel and our Revit models. The fact that we can then start to update the data here is very powerful. This could be a way for you to add pricing in afterwards. Um, if you were a manufacturer doing layout, you could get your costings in that way. But it means that people that may not be the, the, the draftsmen or the designers that are actually doing the work in Revit can now access this data and manipulate this data on your behalf as well so yes there are certain limitations within within the um, type parameters but you wouldn't really want to be messing around with the type parameters externally anyway rule of thumb when you export it if it's gray it's uneditable so it automatically tries to make sure that these elements here are going to be linked yeah correctly it's a very very powerful tool um, it's only a short webinar as I say it's designed to just introduce you to the way that these tools work um, hope that's been an insight um, please if you haven't already downloaded the, the power pack uh, you can download the trial whilst you're waiting for a license or if you're not one of our customers yet please get in touch um, um, to move your subscription over to us as well um, have a play with it and please leave some feedback on our website to tell us how, how well you're getting on with it. Um, hope that's been useful and um, I look forward to seeing you on one of our other um, webinar series shortly. Thank you very much guys.